G'day guys, my name's Nick and welcome to my channel Low Range Nick where I do videos about full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance for your full drive vehicle. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to replace the automatic transmission filter on your full drive. So before we get stuck into changing the automatic transmission filter, we're going to need a couple of bits and pieces to carry out the job. Firstly, we're going to need the correct automatic transmission filter for our vehicle. So for my 2018 Asuzu MUX, which is a six speed automatic gearbox, I require the RTK 305 Ryko transmission filter kit. The automatic transmission fluid that I'm going to be using today is the Penrite multi-vehicle fully synthetic ATF LV. This is purposely made for the six speed automatic gearbox and I have two four litre drums of this oil to carry out the filter change and flush today. Now if you are carrying this out on a different vehicle with an automatic transmission or an older MUX or D-Max with the 5 speed, the process I'll show you today is exactly the same but you will require different parts to carry out the job. So I recommend just chatting to your local parts department to make sure that you get the correct filter kit and the correct oil for your vehicle. You will also require some degreaser and some brake cleaner to carry out the job properly. The main tools we're going to require today to carry out the transmission filter change are a 24mm socket on a breaker bar, a 14mm socket on a ratchet, a 5mm allen key and a 10mm socket on a ratchet as well. We are also going to require a drain tray with measurements on it, a funnel and a pump to transfer the oil from our drums into our transmission. And we will also require a few rags for cleaning things up some rubber gloves and I also like to throw a bit of cardboard under the vehicle when I'm draining the oil and taking the pan off just to catch any of those drips or drops that might escape the drain tray. And the final thing that we require to carry out the transmission filter and oil change today is an OBD2 scan tool. Now we need to check the temperature in the transmission and ensure that it's around 50 degrees Celsius when we check the oil level. Now if you don't have an OBD2 scan tool, don't stress too much, I will show you later in the video a little trick on how we can guesstimate the correct temperature of the transmission and ensure that we have the right temperature when we check the oil level. So now I've gone through all the parts and bits and pieces that we're going to require to carry out the job today, now let's get stuck into changing the transmission filter on the vehicle. So the first step in changing your transmission oil filter is to take the vehicle for a 15 minute drive or until your vehicle reaches operating temperature and that will enable the oil in the transmission to thin out and drain down into the sump so we can drain it all out really thoroughly. So I've already taken my vehicle for a 15 minute drive and it's already up to operating temperature so I'm ready to go and I'm ready to change the filter. So let's jump underneath the vehicle and get stuck into it. Okay guys, so now we're ready to drain the transmission oil from the transmission. So what we need to do is loosen the fill bung first, which is a 24 millimeter bung up on the side of the transmission. So let's just loosen this fill bung off first. And we'll remove that completely from the transmission. And now we're ready to grab our 14 millimeter socket on our ratchet and we can loosen off the drain bung. And now we can drain all of our fluid from the transmission into our pan. All right guys, so now our oil is just dripping out very slowly. What I'm going to do is leave the bung out and I'm going to loosen off all of the bolts around the back of the pan. So what this will do is enable the pan to drop down at the back and the rest of the fluid should drain out of this bung and we should have just a tiny bit left in the pan when we take it completely off. So what I will continue to do is just take some of the other bolts off as well 
and just leave one bolt in up the front of the transmission pan. So now I'm on my final bolt, I'm just going to loosen it off a couple of turns, still leave it in, but just allow all of the fluid to drain out of that drain bung. So you see how the pan angles down a fair bit now, and all of that fluid's draining out without me having to remove the pan. So I'll just let that drain for a couple of minutes until it turns to drips, and then we're ready to remove the transmission pan from the transmission. So let's get rid of this last bolt and remove the trans pan. So I'm just draining all of that oil from the trans pan into my little drain pan down here so I can collect it and measure it later. So now we've got that trans pan off, now I can put this aside and we'll clean it up later. So now I've removed the transmission pan, what you can see here is the transmission filter. So now we just need to remove the three 10mm bolts holding the filter onto the transmission and pop it off a little o-ring in here and we just drain and catch that little bit of fluid that escapes and then we can replace our filter. So now I've removed the old transmission filter from the transmission. Now one thing to be aware of is that there is an o-ring fitted to this filter that needs to be accounted for. So please do not leave this o-ring in the transmission. Please double check that when you've taken the old filter off, the o-ring is on the old filter. So now we can put this aside and get stuck into fitting the new filter to the transmission. So here is the transmission filter that we're going to replace today. And you can see the little o-ring here, this is the o-ring that I was talking about. So we need to ensure that when we remove the old filter from the transmission, the o-ring comes with it. And when we fit our new transmission filter to the transmission, we definitely need to make sure that our o-ring is on the new transmission filter, and that we put just a little bit of lubricant on there. So you can put a little bit of Vaseline, or a little bit of transmission fluid. I like to just use transmission fluid because it keeps it nice and simple. Also, a little tip for you guys is when you're laying out the transmission pan gasket or seal, it is good to lay it out for a couple of hours before you start the job because they are sort of just mangled up and chucked into the box. So if you lay it out, let it get its form back, it should be really easy to fit to the pan and back to the vehicle. So let's get our new transmission filter fitted to the vehicle and tightened up. So like I said before, I'm just going to use a little bit of transmission oil just to lubricate this o-ring just so it goes into the housing really easy. Now we can line it up and we can push our filter up into the housing. There we go. Now I'll get my bolts and I'll just do those up finger tight for starters and then I'll tighten them up with the ratchet after. So now those three bolts are holding up the transmission filter and my o-ring is sitting in there nicely. Now I can just tighten these up and they should be tightened to around 10 newton meters. So now it's time to remove the old transmission pan gasket and clean up the transmission pan. So we do want to clean this out so it's entirely spotless. So using a combination of degreaser to get rid of the oil, and then at the end a bit of brake cleaner to get rid of all of the residue, we can ensure that our transmission pan is entirely clean and ready to go back on the vehicle. So let's get stuck into cleaning.
Now I just need to go around with a rag and give it a really good clean out. So I can also take off these magnets, clean them off really well and put them back in the exact same spots. So these are in the transmission pan to catch any swarf that goes around the transmission. So now it's time for one more clean before I fit my new pan gasket to the trans pan. And for the final clean I'm going to use a microfiber towel just to make sure that I don't leave any fibers in the transmission. So we'll just give this one final clean just make sure that it's immaculate. Dry off all that brake cleaner, and the best thing about brake cleaner is that it will evaporate into the air. So it's not going to leave any residue in the transmission because it does dry completely. So that's looking pretty damn good. That's nice and clean. I've got rid of all of the oil in that trans pan. I've also taken off all of the metal off of these little magnets. So they're fresh and ready to go again and my ceiling surface around here where the gasket's going to go is looking nice and clean. So now I'm ready to fit my new transmission pan gasket to the transmission pan. So I'll just line it all up here, get all my holes lined up and work my way around. So by laying the gasket out, you know, a couple of hours before you start the job, it will make it a heap easier in getting this to line up. So that's just gone on really easy, which is perfect. And that's sitting on there nicely. So what we're going to do now is jump back under the vehicle. We're going to clean up the transmission ceiling surface and get ready to put our pan back on. So I'll just use this old rag here just to get rid of that oil residue that's sitting around that surface and that first layer of dirt and grime. So by letting the transmission sit for about an hour or so to let it drain with the pan off will actually help you with these little drips that come down. So if you can let it sit for longer, it's gonna help you when you put this pan back on because it'll mean you won't have any drips coming through the gasket area. So now we've cleaned that up pretty good. I'm just gonna get a bit of brake cleaner on my microfiber rag and give it a final clean up. And this will just remove any residue from that sealing surface and make sure that we get a nice dry seal when we put the new gasket on. There we go, and we'll just get our bolts in as quick as we can. Perfect. So now I've tightened down the transmission pan finger tight. Now I just need to tighten down the bolts correctly to around 10 Newton meters. So to tighten the pan down correctly, we need to start from the inside and work our way out. What this will do is allow us to torque down this transmission pan evenly and ensure that it doesn't warp and that the gasket doesn't leak. So firstly, I'll just start with this bolt here and I'm going to start from the center. And like I said before, I'm going to torque this down to 10 Newton meters and then work across to the other central bolt. And that will pull the middle of the trans pan down. That's good. Now we've pulled the middle of the trans pan down. Now we need to work on either end, pulling those down as well. So now we've tightened these two central bolts, these two. Now we can start working in a cross pattern to the next bolt on either side. So which is this far corner on this side. And then this bolt here on this side. So we'll tighten this bolt down on this side. This one here on this side. And now we can work out to our end bolts here and tighten these down as well. So we'll start in the center. Work our way out.
just a central one on the back here. It's the next one. Then we've got this outer one. And that's the final bolt, I believe. Now what I like to do at the end is just go around in a circle. Just double check that I have tightened every single bolt and haven't missed one. Because you're going in a sort of, you know, crossways pattern. It is easy to miss a bolt if you're doing this. Just make sure we've got them all. And they are all nice and tight. And we are good to go. So now we can fit our transmission drain bung back to the trans pan. So we'll just tighten that up. And then we can continue with filling the transmission with fresh oil. So before we fill the transmission, we just need to check our drain pan and check the measurements on the side here to see how much fluid we drained out of the transmission. So you can see down here the five increment and the four is just under the oil. So if you angle it back just a little bit, you can see that it's ever so slightly over the four. So it's probably about 4.2 liters that I've drained out of the transmission. So what I need to do now is put 4.2 liters of fresh oil back in through my fill bung into the transmission as a starting point. So I've just got my little Tom thumb pump here. I've got that into the fill bung here and I'm just gonna to continue to pump this entire drum into the transmission. Now I can refit my fill bung and tighten up. So now I've filled the transmission with the correct amount of oil, the exact same amount that I drained out. Now I know my transmission oil level is going to be pretty damn close to where it should be. So if you don't have an OBD2 scan tool to check the temperature of the transmission when you're checking the level, you definitely need to measure the amount that you're draining out to ensure that you put the same amount back into the transmission. So now I've connected my OBD2 scan tool to the vehicle. Now it's time to check the automatic transmission fluid temp. So what I need to do is go into the live data in the TCM and monitor the temperature of the automatic transmission. So once I get it to 50 degrees, then it's the perfect temperature for me to jump underneath and check it via the check bung. So let's start up the vehicle and get it up to temp. So now that my temperature display on the dashboard has jumped from the second to the third bar, or that the vehicle has reached operating temp, what you can see now is that our engine coolant temperature is around 76 degrees, and our transmission fluid temperature is 48 degrees Celsius. So this is within our set point, so it's around 50 degrees that we want the trans temp at, but it can be give or take a couple of degrees, it's perfectly fine. So if you don't have a scan tool, you can check it through the dashboard when it jumps from that second to the third bar, then it's time to jump under the vehicle and check the level. So now that we've checked the transmission oil level at the correct temp, we know that the level in the transmission is perfect. So by measuring the oil, we can accurately put the same amount back in the transmission. And as you saw in those last few clips, I was probably only 100 mils off the correct level. So a couple of little pumps of the Tom Thumb pump, just to top it up that little bit more, and it was bang on. So by measuring the oil, putting the same amount back in, and also monitoring the temperature gauge in the vehicle, you can still carry out this job without a scan tool. So what I'm gonna do now is clean down the vehicle, hose it off, take it for a nice drive, bring it back and double check my work. So it's always important to double check your work, make sure there's no leaks, all your bungs are tight and that you're ready to go.
So there you go guys, now I've changed the automatic transmission filter on my four-wheel drive. Now I'm going to have smooth shifting for years to come. So thanks a lot for watching guys. If you did enjoy today's video, if it helps you learn a few things, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for more full driving, accessory fitting and maintenance videos. Cheers guys.